Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. In this video, we'll be spending a few days in the beautiful city of Vancouver in Canada. We'll be checking out its harbour and skyline from many different vantage points. We'll take a stroll through Gastown and check out its famous steam clock. We'll experience some of the seedier aspects of Vancouver from Chinatown and downtown Eastside. We'll explore Canada Place and get familiar with the terminal before our upcoming cruise. We'll go to Vancouver Lookout and be stunned and amazed by the 360 degree views of the city of Vancouver. We'll ride on the city's modern, clean and efficient public transport system. We'll both be stricken by COVID and have to rest for a few days. After we recover somewhat, we'll take a trip out to False Creek and Granville Island. We'll take a walk along the walking paths of False Creek and rub shoulders with the local wildlife. We'll check out Granville Island's vibrant public market and get a bite to eat there. We'll try new foods at funky cafes and generally enjoy exploring the city of Vancouver. Join me. We started our first full day exploring Vancouver by having breakfast at Nemesis Coffee. This is only 300 metres or about a five minute walk away from our Airbnb in Mount Pleasant. This coffee shop is on the grounds of Emily Carr University. It's a modern, funky, uh, architectural building, both inside and out. It took a little bit of time to get served, but uh, the food was quite good. However, the coffee was, well, terrible. In fact, I didn't have very many nice coffees in either Canada or the US. We finished our breakfast and headed towards Science World. This is on the banks of the False Creek about one and a half kilometers and a 20 minute walk from Nemesis Coffee. We didn't go in because, well, there were so many kids about, we didn't want to get inundated by them. It is a fantastic vantage point to take pictures and look at the skyline of Vancouver. We strolled along the outside of the building where you'll find some interesting artworks as well as engineering and other machinery displays scattered about the outside. Quite fascinating really. We continued walking and basically followed a line alongst the railway line. First we went to Craigside Park and then we found ourselves in Andy Livingstone Park. Our sense of unease increased exponentially as there were a number of homeless and drug affected people who were just milling about this park. We continued walking towards Chinatown and to Shanghai Alley. Vancouver's Chinatown might be one of the oldest Chinatowns in North America, but I didn't think much of it. The shops were mostly closed. Most of the buildings were either old and very shabby or modern and not very Chinese looking. Overall, I don't think it was worth coming here. And the further into Chinatown we got, the worse our experience became. Somehow Joe and I ended up in East Hastings Street, only a block from where this footage was taken. The downtown east side area of Vancouver is the centre for homelessness, drug taking and high levels of street crime. It was a pretty serious mistake we made. I put away all my cameras and valuables. This isn't my footage. This is uh, obtained off the internet but this does give a pretty good depiction of what we saw there. It was pretty confronting. Such a shame, it's such a beautiful city. And my advice to you is don't go to Chinatown or downtown Eastside in Vancouver. It did take us quite a while to get to a much safer part of the downtown Vancouver area. Our next destination was Gastown. A 15 minute walk, 750 meters, and almost a world away. We'd come here to see Vancouver's famous steam clock. It was nearly 11 a.m. and a perfect time to wait and hear the clock go off.
had a bit of a look around Gastown and sat down and enjoyed a very nice coffee at one of the local cafes. Some of the architecture here did remind me of my hometown in Melbourne. We continued walking and discovered the majestic building that is the Canadian Pacific Railway building. We decided to have a look outside as well as have a peek inside this fantastic terminal. You can also get a pretty good view of Vancouver Harbour from the car park that's just beside the station. continued walking on to Canada Place. This is a large cruise ship terminal that can accommodate three large ocean going cruise liners. We were quite excited because we were going to catch a cruise to Alaska in the coming days and wanted to acquaint ourselves with this terminal. We were pretty excited because this was going to be our first ocean going cruise. We'd previously cruised on the river boat in Europe but never one of these huge ships. I will do a full review of our first ever ocean going cruise in an upcoming video very shortly. Our next attraction was the Vancouver Lookout. This is a tall tower that's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. The tower is 168 meters or 553 feet high and offers stunning 360 degree views of Vancouver. The tower opened in 1977 and cost $18.25 per person to get in. It is closed on certain days, so it's wise just to check the website to find out what days it will be closed. There wasn't a line to buy tickets, and we quickly purchased tickets using a very efficient tablet system. With tickets in hand, we rode up a very impressive glass elevator all the way to the top. That was quite an impressive elevator ride. When we got to the observation deck, it seemed quite safe. The sides were quite substantial, and I think that uh, those with a fear of heights wouldn't necessarily have that much of an issue here because it offers stunning 360 degree views of the city of Vancouver, as well as providing security with a solid uh, wall between you and the window.
marvellous views from up on that lookout. By this stage I'd started to become somewhat unwell. We had a brief walk in the city, went into a convenience store to stock up on a few things and slowly made our way back to our Airbnb in Mount Pleasant. We rode the modern, efficient and super clean subway system a couple of stops to our Airbnb. We got on at Granville Station, which is pretty hard to find because, well, the entrance isn't that large. We had to walk around a bit and we finally found it. If you're looking for it, well, this is what it looks like. Quite tiny, really. The journey from Granville Station to Central Station only takes a couple of minutes and it costs between two and five dollars. It saved our legs and, as I wasn't feeling that well, saved me a little bit as well. It was a pretty nice uh, journey on an elevated platform. We got to Central Station and headed down the escalator and the short walk from the station to our Airbnb. One pathetic soap story later. Well, it was bound to happen. I got quite ill. I suspect it was COVID that I caught from uh, passengers sitting behind us in the bus from Victoria to Vancouver. As with my previous bout of COVID, I had a reasonably high temperature and sore throat, but that was pretty much the extent of my symptoms. I did recover after about 36 hours, so I did take it fairly easy for the next day and a half. Plenty of bed rest and lying in the couch watching a bit of YouTube and some TV, and it was a bit cool, and it was great to be in front of a, a fireplace. Unfortunately, after I got well, Joe started to go downhill. Two days later. Unfortunately, our illness did cost us about uh, two days of touring around Vancouver. We missed out on seeing Stanley Park, the Van Dusen Botanical Gardens, and the Capilano Suspension Bridge. We did venture out uh, after a couple of days and headed towards Granville Island. Granville Island was nearly four kilometres to the west of where we were staying. We decided to hop on a bus and go about two thirds of the way to Charleston Park. The park was quite safe. There were lots of uh, families and kids uh, in it and it led to False Creek. The walk along False Creek provided a fantastic view of the creek and of the skyline of Vancouver. We were still both in recovery mode, so we took a leisurely walk along the Seaside Greenway Seawall Walk, which is a mouthful. It provided stunning views of marinas, as well as a fantastic view of Granville Island and the impressive Granville Bridge. The weather was mostly kind to us. It was a little bit overcast and changeable uh, and cool, but otherwise uh, sunny for most of the day.
here just before 11 and it looks like most places open at 11.30. So it's a handy tip to know if you're coming to Granville Island. It is a Saturday morning by the way. I thought it'd be busier. The later in the day it got, the busier the market got. It was time for lunch and we had a really good look around to see what we were going to eat. I decided to get some sushi. It was absolutely fantastic sushi. It was really fresh and flavourful. We found a seat outside and had lunch soaking in all the vitamin D from the late spring sun. By this time we were both feeling quite tired. We left the public market and continued on a little stroll around the rest of Granville Island. And after we'd finished that, we slowly made our way back to the bus stop and back to our Airbnb accommodation. We really enjoyed coming to Granville Island. We were able to get some great food from the public market. And Jo went into quite a few of the artisan stores and she actually bought a couple of things from some of the stores. And as we left Granville Island, there were so many people streaming in. So the moral to that story is don't get to Granville Island too early in the day. Aim to get there at least after midday. We enjoyed our time in Vancouver. Unfortunately, due to illness, we feel that we didn't quite do everything that we set out to do and had planned to do. Oh well, we'll just have to come back another time. I do hope you liked this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notify bell so you'll never miss another upcoming video. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee or smashing that super thanks button. And look out for our video next week, which will be a review of our first ever ocean cruise. Until next time, you take care and bye now.